So we're going to start with an augmented reality app template with a new project. And we're going to use reality kit as the content technology and the remaining we're just going to leave it as default. So because we choose augmented reality template, the code comes with some template code that we can use, but we're just going to delete all that because we don't really need it. So we're only going to use this IB outlet called AR view, which is a view that is responsible for rendering the AR scene and session. So first thing we want to do here is we're going to initialize and configure the AR session to be running plane detection, namely the horizontal plane detection. So it will detect any tabletop surfaces. So to configure and initialize this, we're going to create a function called start AR session. In here, first thing we want to do is we want to enable automatic AR session configuration. So let's choose AR view, set automatically configure session to true. Next, let's initialize the plane detection. And over here, we're going to create a AR world tracking configuration. And this takes care of the six degrees of freedom tracking when the scene starts. And in here, we're going to initialize plane detection to be just the horizontal surfaces. We don't want to detect any walls or vertical surfaces, just horizontal planes. And we're also going to set environment texturing to automatic. So automatic environment texturing, what it does is it takes care of the whole lighting and texturing to make it more realistic. So now we've initialized and made the configuration. Let's pass this configuration onto an AR session and get it running. So we're going to create AR view dot session and we're going to run it with configuration that we just made and no options. Of course, I named it configure. So let's just rename this to configuration. That's more appropriate. And now if I click build again, there you go. So what this method essentially does is it sets up the AR scene to track horizontal surfaces only. And it gets the session up and running. And we're also going to add one last option, and that is debug option equals show geometry, anchor geometry. And what this allows you to do is it visualizes the plane that's being detected in the real world in real time, just for visualization purposes. So that's our start AR session method, and let's call it in the view did load. Start AR session. Okay, now that we've done with the initialization, next thing, let's load our 3D model. So first, let's go find a 3D model online. So I'm gonna to go to Apple Quick Look Gallery, and this has some pre-made assets made by Apple for us to use with our projects. And here you can see the robot model. I'm gonna download it and save it onto my desktop. And you can notice that it's a USDZ file format. And as I mentioned in earlier episodes, Apple only accepts USDZ file format 3D objects. And I made videos on how to convert from other file formats to USDZ if you're interested in that. But for now, let's just work with USDZ straight down. So first step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the USDC robot file into my project. So I'm going to create add files, choose add files, go to desktop and choose robot.usds. And I can also see if I click play here that it has some inbuilt animation that comes along with it, which we'll use in later episodes. So let's go back to our view controller and let's load this 3D model and get a reference to it in the scene. For that, I'm going to create what you call an entity and assign this robot model to an entity. So in A or C, there are anchors and entity. Anchors are like hooks, which you place on certain locations in the real world so that it's immovable. And entities are the physical objects, the 3D models. And what we do in an AR scene is we place an anchor at a 3D location and attach the entity or the model to the anchor. So it's anchor plus entity, and we assign both of them to a scene. So first we need to create the entity. 
So I'm going to name it robot entity and choose entity dot load model named. So this will take a file from the project folder and we named it robot. And this method throws an error, so we need to catch it under a try statement. If I click build, shows cannot find robot entity in scope. Of course, because we haven't declared this here, here yet. So we're going to create a variable called robot entity here. And this would be of type model entity, like we said before. Of course, this needs to be a var. Great, so now it's fine. So now we got reference to the robot 3D model here. So next, what we want to do is we want to create a function that takes this model entity or the 3D model and places it into a certain location in the real world. So for that, we're going to create a function called place object. And this takes as parameters an object, which is of 3D object, which is of type model entity and a position. Which it will be a 3D vector. So a 3D model and a 3D position. And then we will do three things. Number one, we will create an anchor at the 3D location. After we create an anchor there, we'll tie the 3D model onto this anchor. And then we add the anchor to the scene. So for this first, we'll create an object anchor. And this is of type anchor entity. And this comes with different overloading. And we're going to choose anchor entity at world position. So this accepts a 3D position. And that will be our input parameter here. Now that we have the immovable hook, the object anchor at a specific location, we're going to tie the 3D model onto this anchor. So we're going to choose the object anchor and add the 3D model as a child. So this would be the object here. And finally, we're going to create, add in this anchor into the ARC. So arview.scene.add anchor, and uh, we're going to create an object anchor. In summary, this function, it takes in a model entity and places it at a 3D location in the real world. Of course, we haven't used this yet, and we will do that next. So before we use this, we don't have a place in the 3D world we want to put the object on yet. What we want to do is we want to tap on a screen on a specific point on the table and place the object there. So for that, we have the 2D location on the screen where we tapped on, and we need to convert that 2D location into the corresponding 3D point in the real world. So first, let's get the 3D 2D point. For that, we need a tap detector. We need to detect taps on the screen and its location. So to do this, we would need to add a gesture recognizer to the ARV. Add gesture recognizer, and this is of UI, type UI gesture recognizer. And we're going to choose this method. And here, the target would be self, and the action, it's a selector. So of, this shows that it's an Objective-C function, and this is the callback that is called every time you tap. You don't need to know the details, but essentially a selector allows you to interface an Objective-C method into the Swift code. So this method would be the callback that's called every time the user taps on the screen, and it would contain within it information about the tap. So the method here, we will create a method called handle tap, and this would have a recognizer input parameter, and we need to create this function below. of type uh, input parameter recognizer, which is of type UI tap gesture recognizer. And we also want to preface this with 
at objc do tell Swift that this is an Objective C method. And there you go. Great, so it's building fine now. So inside this method, first we will get the tab location in 2D coordinates. So the tab location, which is a 2D point. This will store it in a variable called tab location. And we get it from the recognizer object, which is passed on every time a tab is done. Recognizer.location in AR view. And this would give the 2D point of where we tapped on the screen. Next, what we want to do is we want to take this 2D point and convert it into the corresponding 3D location in the real world. To do this, we'll use something called ray casting. To convert from 2D to 3D point. So what is ray casting? I'll make a video on that more in more detail and I'll link it up here. But in short, you can think of it like a ray that passes on from the camera to the real world and say if the ray hits a plane that was detected by our kit like the surface of the table it would return a result and in that result you could get access to the 3d location which corresponded to the point where the user tapped from on the 2d screen and if it did not hit a specific plane that AR kit detected it won't result, return a result so raycasting in short is a way to convert a 2d point on the screen to the corresponding 3d location in the real world so to do that, we're going to shoot a ray from the AR view. So AR view dot ray cast, and it will be from the 2D point, which is the tap location here, and allowing estimated planes. And we also we only want to detect positions on a horizontal plane. So we're going to choose the alignment to horizontal. So what this does essentially is it takes a ray from the camera, shoots it onto the real world. And any time the ray hits a horizontal plane detected by the AR kit framework, it would return a result. But if it does not hit the horizontal plane, it won't return a result. So we're going to store the results from this raycast into a results variable. So this would be an array of results. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the first raycast result from this. So every time there's a plane detected, it would return a result. So if let first result equals results dot first, and here we can get access to the 3D position from the first result variable. So let world position equals first result dot world transform dot columns dot three. And we need to convert it into a 3D vector. So we're going to Cindy make float tree and wrap this around it. So this essentially extracts the 3D coordinates of the 3D location in X, Y, Z coordinates. Great, so now we got the 3D location. Let's run and everything's fine. So we have the 3D position now. We know where to place the object. So let's Called the place object function that we created earlier, which takes in a 3D model and places it in a position given by a 3D vector. So place object. Place object, the model that we want to place would be the robot entity, and the position would be the world position. Play, and it's all working. So that's it really. In summary, we initialize the AR session, load the 3D model, add a tab detector to detect the location where we tap on the screen, and inside the callback method, we take the 2D location of the tap and convert it into the corresponding 3D point on the real world using a raycast. And when we get a hit test, we take the 3D point and place the object in that point. That's how we place a 3D model of a robot onto the table.